Recording. Testing, testing. All right, we're going to uh, present a physical examination that we're doing for this dog who's presenting for ovary hysterectomy. This is Duchess. She's a two-year-old Labrador mix. And um, we've gone ahead and started her physical exam form by filling out the subjective portion. We're going to go next by including the physical exam portion, so weight, her weight was 23.5 kilograms, um, her attitude is bright, alert, and responsive. We're going to assess her fear score, her temperature, pulse, respiration, capillary refill time, mucous membrane color, hydration, body condition score, um, whether or not she's pregnant, lactating, and then we'll go through the list of all of the body systems. And I may or may not go in order of the list of body systems just depending on the patient's response. So we're going to start with her general appearance today. And I'm going to have my assistant walk her around a little bit since she's very willing to do that. And I'm going to just assess her gait and look for any asymmetries in her body and anything that's blatantly abnormal. And one of the things I can see quite readily with her is that she's got some issues with her hair coat. She's got some thinning hair and some fairly profuse shedding in places. Um, and this is very normal uh, for a postpartum dog. She, she is known to have recently had a litter of puppies um, that she uh, fed and they're ready to be adopted now. <clears throat> so because I'm kind of looking at her skin and the integument is next, I'll go ahead and continue my exam with the integument. All right, I'm just gonna use a flea comb and go front to back all the way down her body. What a good girl you are. I'm going to concentrate my efforts here near the base of the tail where fleas like to congregate. And I'm checking the hair now for any um, black or white debris. I'm not seeing any of that. If I did, then I could moisten that and see if that black debris um, turns back into blood. I'm going to continue with her integument or exam and look at places where there's pretty obvious, easy to see skin. Um, so I like to use the axillary region and I can see some scratches there, like maybe she's pruritic um, and she's very willing to roll over for us. Maybe you can come into the frame a little bit and we'll look at her inguinal region and her ventral abdomen, ventral chest. And we can clearly see that she's got some scabbing and some redness there that I'm going to note um, throughout these areas of her skin. Thank you very much. As I'm doing this exam, I can note uh, things quickly that are abnormal um, or normal. And then later on, I can go into my objective system and uh, portion and make more detailed notes about what I'm finding on my exam. On the list next is ophthalmic. Hi. So I'm looking at her eyes for any discharge, any redness of the sclera, any swelling of the conjunctiva, any clouding or changes in the pupil um, area. No squinting noted, no signs of pain there. And since I'm already at ophthalmic and she's being really nice and allowing me to do that, I'm going to go ahead and do one of the nervous system checks, um, which has to do with the eyes. So with my pen light, I'm just going to shine light into each eye and look for consensual responses of both pupils on that side. And then the other part of the nervous system would be um, a menace response, just quite present, and palpebral reflex. Good girl. Thank you. Good job. She's very confused about what we're doing. <laughs> um, and then we've got Odic. And we typically don't have you do otoscopy on awake patients. We'll save that for when she's under anesthesia or recovering from anesthesia. But I can look at um, the inner uh, portion of the pinna here and the pinna folds and see that there's a little bit of waxy debris, not overly dirty, deep down in the canal. Um, and she's being very nice. So I'll go ahead and um, check the odor too, make sure that doesn't smell abnormal. Good girl. All right. Musculoskeletal is next, and we assessed that a little bit already when we were looking at her uh, general appearance, um, looking at how she was moving. 
um, and that was all normal. I didn't see any obvious muscular deficiencies. But I'm going to go ahead and check the joints in her limbs here. Hi, Melty. So checking um, for any crepitation in her joints, through her elbows, carpus, and looking at her toes. And a lot of dogs don't really love to have their feet handled, so I'm going to minimize that for her at this point. I'm going to go ahead and do a little range of motion of her hip, noting any crepitation. Knee. She's finger stiff now. <laughs> Good girl. Good. And then checking um, for her patella. I'm also palpating for any swelling in, in the knee. Checking her patella, her hocks, and then the toes of her hind limb. And then we just we'll repeat that on the other side. It's okay, we can do it on the floor. Good girl. <laughs> and the other thing that we're noting as part of her uh, musculoskeletal system is that she does have a little umbilical hernia here. And I'm just going to check to see if that's reducible or not. Sometimes you can palpate, still palpate a little hole there. Hers appears to be closed. Good girl. All right, we've got cardiovascular and respiratory next. So along with getting her heart rate um, and rhythm, we're also going to um, check the quality of the heart sounds along with the quality of the pulse. That heart rate is 100 beats per minute, and she's got a slight sinus arrhythmia, but no pulse deficits at all. I'm going to go ahead and finish by listening to um, all of the uh, valve regions on the heart. Just to help me rule out any murmurs. Since we're down here, we're going to go ahead and listen to the respiratory system. There's a few breaths in each of the nine quadrants on each side of the chest. We'll get a respiratory rate. Oh, nice Note those. Next, we have reproductive system. Be a good time for you to show us our your belly. Oh, good girl. So I'm gonna check all of the mammary glands um, in the chain on both sides, and I'm looking for 
um, palpating for any abnormal swelling um, masses in the mammary chain. This is a dog that has kind of pendulous mammary glands because she recently was lactating. Um, so that's normal for um, her current state. And then we want to make sure that she's not still lactating, um, just pressing a little bit gently um, on the mammary gland base to see if she has any milk or other kind of discharge that I would note if I saw it. Good girl. And then while we're down here and she's being so polite, we're <laughs> just check her external um, reproductive tract there. Um, her vulva looks like she's got a little vulva or full dermatitis happening, which we'll note in her objective findings. All right, and then next on the list is urinary, and we can only see the external portion of that as well. We'll take her out um, to urinate and um, do a free catch sample and see if there's anything obvious in that. Um, and if there were any abnormal findings, we would note that as well. Um, okay, and palpation of the bladder, that's right. Okay, so we'll do that. Stand up for me. Now, some dogs are not super tolerant to having their abdomen palpated, so we'll see. It's like a normal, normal, fairly large bladder. You gotta go potty, potty. don't you? Okay, I won't keep squeezing on you. That's not very fair. Um, a nervous system <laughs> is next. And so we've got done some of our nervous system responses already. Um, we're gonna continue here. If she lets us, she's um, being a little bit overly submissive now. Do need her to stand for these because we're going to check her conscious proprioceptive reflexes. Good girl. Um, I'll just start on the back here. Flip the toe. Floor is slippery. So you can see that some of this is nervous um, nervousness, mental nervousness, not her nervous system, not responding properly because we saw earlier that she walked normally without any toe dragging. There we go. That is weird. And now we'll check her front. Can you stand up? Up, up. Good girl. Good job. Up, up, up. Would like a toenail trim, please. <laughs> Girl. All right. Very nice. Did I miss any nervous system ones? I think I did the others earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we uh, we need to check alimentary. And while I'm in there, I'll check her CRT mucous membrane color and hydration. Hi. Good girl. So we'll just look in her mouth here. And as we're looking, I'm assessing um, her gingival grade and her tartar grade. Um, we'll do a little CRT check there. It was one second. Color is pink and it's nice and moist there, so her hydration status is likely within normal limits. And we'll check the other side. I'm also looking for any occlusion abnormalities, any pathology that I can readily see in the mouth um, along the inner buccal surfaces as well. Good girl. No nasal discharge. Good job. Good girl. All right. And then we just have lymphatic. Yeah. That's right. Entry of alimentary, <laughs> exit of alimentary. Okay, okay. So I'll just check um, her anus here for any abnormalities. And that all looks normal. Good girl. And lymph. And lymph. We got our mandibular lymph nodes, there's salivary glands there too, so you should find two lumps on each side. The lymph gland will be smaller than the salivary gland. And then prescapular. And can you sit yeah. for me for a second? Come on. You're not being the best model. Come on. Come on. Come on. Melting girl. So notice that each time I'm um, palpating lymph nodes, I'm doing both sides at the same time and I'm massaging that region to try to find that lymph gland slipping through my fingertips. She also has a little hair loss and some 
redness and scratches on her ventral neck. And then her axillaries I shouldn't be able to feel. One more time. An inguinal. And popliteal. So I'm going straight back from the patella on both sides. And no asymmetries. And they feel about garbanzo bean sized for her good girl. All right. So now I'll go into the objective system and make more detailed notes about the abnormal findings that we saw. Um, and that completes. Oh yeah, that almost completes our exam. We've got our um, fear assessment score and body condition score. So on the fear assessment score, um, we've got a scale here that we can use. And I can see that zero um, are no signs of fear. Pet displays relaxed body language and solicits uh, social interactions with team members. Um, she does have some signs. She's got some overly submissive signs here. Um, so if I look at level one, I've got uh, displays one or two mild signs such as lip licking, avoiding eye contact, turning head away um, without moving away, lifting a paw, partially dilated pupils, yes. Yeah. Panting with the commissure of the lips relaxed. And then um, interested in reinforces such as treats, play, attention, um, or chooses to interact with team members. So I'm going to give her a low fear score, which is one out of four. And then her body condition score, um, scale out of three or and scale out of nine. I um, can assess that and use the body condition score system next to the scale there. So I'm palpating her entire length of her spine over the hip bones and um, over the rib area. And I'm looking at the tuck here of her abdomen. And I'm also looking for any additional fat pads that can develop on dogs over the shoulder, um, across the front of the chest, and at the tail head. And I'm not seeing any of those signs, so I would say she's got a really nice body condition score, so I'm going to give her an ideal score. All right. That is done.